There are four primary techniques or gears in classic skiing, and each is used in different situations. This video is focused on the modern techniques of classic skiing for use on groomed trails. We won't talk about techniques for classic ski touring off of groomed trails. Classic striding, sometimes called diagonal stride, is the traditional and stereotypical classic technique. Striding is like a low to medium gear in a car or bike, good for starting from a standstill, climbing up moderate hills, or when the snow is slow or deep. Striding is powerful, but is inefficient at the higher speeds typical on gradual uphills, flats, and downhills. Striding is also used for easy, relaxed classic skiing on flat terrain, and is the first technique learned by beginners. In spite of this, striding uphill is deceptively difficult, and requires exquisite balance and excellent weight transfer. It's one of the hardest and most subtle Nordic ski techniques to master, skate or classic. When striding, you push with one pole and drive your body forward to glide on a single ski, bringing your opposite pole forward at the same time, left arm with the right leg or right arm with the left leg. The important thing is that your arm swings forward in tandem with your body driving forward. The forward motion of your body should come from thrusting your hip and knee forward while pressing downward with the other foot. Propulsion does not come from swinging or kicking your leg and foot forward. When striding, you're never standing with weight on both skis. You are fully balanced and gliding forward on one ski, then drive your body forward onto the other to glide, and so on. It's easier to stride in well-established classic tracks, but striding out of the tracks on a groomed surface is excellent practice for balance and weight transfer. Machine set tracks are also often wider than is comfortable for striding, especially for people of smaller stature. It's totally fine to stride outside of the tracks. Climbing hills on classic skis can be a challenge. If the hill isn't too steep, you may be able to stride up it, but you'll likely need to stride at a higher tempo with shorter steps. When striding of any sort becomes challenging, a high speed and high energy option is a running stride, which is typically easier out of the tracks. If you need more grip, you can widen your skis into a slight V for what's called a running herringbone. If possible, don't do this in the tracks because you'll destroy them. If you need even more grip or want relaxed and easy uphills, rotate your skis into an even wider V and take uphill steps, leaning onto the inside edges of your skis. This technique is called a herringbone. Herringbone, running herringbone, and running striding are the equivalents of the very low gears in a car or bike, and herringbone is the lowest. When all else fails, you can herringbone. In all of these uphill techniques, your arms should still move opposite your legs as in normal striding. Left arm forward when your right leg goes forward, etc. When going back down a hill, the easiest way to slow down is to use the snowplow or pizza slice technique familiar to beginning downhill skiers. Double poling is like a high gear in a car or bike. Good for high speeds on downhills, flats, or very slight uphills in fast conditions. Double poling is typically a later technique learned by beginners. Double poling is also good practice for skate skiing because it isolates the poling motion used in skate techniques. Easy and relaxed double poling can be sustained for a long time on flat and gradual terrain, where it's typically more efficient than striding. When double poling, your hips and knees drive forward and your body opens. Then you plant your poles, crunch with your abs, and pull up with your legs. Double poling is not an up and down motion. It's more like doing a crunch or a v-sit. That is, it's an opening and closing motion. Most of your power comes from the initial pole plant and crunch. It's not necessary to push backwards with your arms. During the follow-through, they can be relaxed. Arms are weak and only play a supporting role in double poling. Keep your hands close to your torso and let your core muscles and legs do most of the work. Kick double poling is like a medium gear in a car or bike. Good for accelerating, for medium speeds on gradual uphills, and for flat terrain in slow conditions. Kick double pole is often the last classic technique learned by beginners. It's more powerful than double poling and more efficient at high speeds than striding. When kick double poling, you drive one leg forward as if to start classic striding, but instead bring both poles forward and do a double pole. Then you drive the other leg forward as if to start striding, but again, double pole. 
Even though it looks like you glide on both skis after the double pull, it's helpful to imagine gliding onto the ski that you just strode forward on, since it will grip next and you'll need your full weight on it. You should alternate legs each stride when kick double pulling. Most classic ski techniques require achieving good contact between the central kick zone of your ski and the snow. Grip is achieved by using skis with built-in fish scales or skins, or applying sticky, snow-condition-dependent kick wax to the kick zone of classic skis. Don't try putting kick wax on skate skis. You can't classic ski on skate skis and you'll be unhappy when you next try to skate on them. If you're struggling with grip, it might be your technique, but it could also be skis that aren't the right fit for your weight, or kick wax that's unsuitable for the current snow conditions.